So I was chilling at home and my other friends were out hiking. I wasn't invited because I had college courses that day, but when they came back they recited an experience to me. So my friends, including my best friend, Brandon, was hiking around the Cherokee National Park, and before they knew it the sun had set. Brandon was trying to get down to a second part of their trail faster and he slid down the side of a hill. Little did he know, his pocket ripped and his phone fell out of his pocket. He didn't know until about 15 minutes later when he went to text somebody and didn't find it. They were already back where they were at this point, but they used SnapMap to see where his phone was. He ran back to get it, and picked it up, and placed it securely in an unripped pocket. Until he heard a blood-curdling scream. He's had similar experiences, but not this close. At first he thought it was a mountain lion until they distinctly yelled help, over here. He walked up the incline and looked between the trees to see where the sound was coming from, and across the way he saw a man standing on a neighboring mountain. The scream stopped and he just stared over at Brandon, an unmoving silhouette. This continued for a few seconds before Brandon's fight or flight suddenly kicked in and he went with it and just started running as fast as he could back to the meeting grounds. He looked back once, and recited to me that the eyes of whatever was chasing him were reflective and too big to be a mountain lion of sorts. He ran for about eight minutes before he ran into two other friends that were on the trip, Caleb and Alex, and they were like, dude, what's wrong? Brandon wastes no time explaining and tells them, just run. And so, they did. They ran for another 10 minutes, all the while the three of them exclaimed they kept hearing screams, all in different tones of voices, male, female, ect. They finally got back, still feeling the chasing, and urged everybody to just get in the car. After that, they sped off and didn't look back. They still haven't gone back. To me this sounds like a skinwalker encounter, but what do y'all think? Because I know since they're Navajo creatures they mostly reside in the Midwest areas, but I just don't know what else this could have been. We're in East Tennessee. I live the farthest out from all my friends, 25 minutes from the nearest town and walking distance from the Cherokee Park border. Back when I was about 9 years old I was riding my bike through access point for all the power lines through like a small farm thing to quickly get to a makeshift bike track from the back entry. I rode my bike over my hill when I saw this weird looking thing walk down a horizontal path in front of me at the bottom of the hill. It sorta of stopped when it saw me then slowly continued. It stopped behind a bush and I could see it bobbing a peeking its white head out from behind the bush. Staring at me. I sat there on the hill for like 20 minutes just watching it watch me. It was like trying to lure me down there or something. Real scary stuff. Eventually it stopped peeking at me. And I sorta of just bolted when it started walking towards me. I rode back home and went up a few streets to the front entry of the bike track. Never went through that access point or forest nearby every again. I'm only 14 now but it still haunts me. This happened to me 8 years ago, but surely something I'll always remember. My grandfather had made it clear that I should never talk about what we've experienced and I should just forget it ever happened. But I feel like I won't ever let go of this memory if I wouldn't be able to release it. So anyways, I was 11 at that time. It was summer and usually we visit our vacation house, which I'd say is pretty secluded. We don't have any close neighbors and the house is literally in the middle of the woods. I never disliked going there as it's close to a river with a waterfall. Which BTW, looks straight up from the Garden of Eve. My parents let me to stay in the house with my grandpa as my mom and dad has a business trip, but I remember them promising they'll follow as soon as they get back from their trip. 
My grandpa picked me up around 2 p.m. in the afternoon. The drive was around three hours. Evening arrived and we're just halfway through, because of a major car crash, we were stuck in the traffic for a long time. We almost finished 10 radio dramas while waiting through the traffic. We were finally driving up the mountains which means we're close home, but the road is insanely dark and covered in trees. There are some parts of the road where it looked like we're driving through tunnels, as the trees branches were covering the sky. Then a loud thud broke the silence between the two of us, my grandpa had hit a big rock that was sitting in the middle of the road like someone intentionally put it there to cause inconvenience. This caused the car to smoke and it turns out that our clutch overheated. My grandpa decided that we spend the night in the car, as he was very tired and he's not very good at driving in the dark. I was also really tired so I was ready to fall asleep, my grandpa said that he'll get his pillow and flashlight at the compartment of the car. I was listening to him move and arrange our stuff and then I fell asleep, I wasn't sure how long have I been sleeping but I got woken up from a sound of scratching under the car. Like someone has a rock and was writing something under the car. I was 100% sure that I'm going to forget it and just sleep in. But as I wander my eyes I saw a one small dash of light in this dark ass road. It was my grandpa facing a tree, pointing his flashlight in the total black of nothingness. I thought he also heard that scratching sound and he was looking for it. I was about to get out the car and call him. Call him, to get back in the car because I'm scared. But suddenly I noticed that his neck is unusually long. And has a patch of hair running through his whole neck. I knew something messed up was going on so I started observing and looking around the car. I panicked and there I see my grandpa, covered in blankets, sleeping at the back of the car. I quickly woke him up and told him what I saw. He quickly dismissed it saying that maybe I was just dreaming or I was just tired. But I knew he was also scared from what I just told him. And he tried to stay calm so I wouldn't panic. Just a few minutes later, the scratches were back and it got louder. And there were also thudding under the car. Like someone is smashing their hands under the car. I was panicking. My eyes were filled with tears where my vision were all blurry and my head hurting from all the anxiety. My grandpa heard all of it, this time he was awake and more alert. He said there might be squirrels or rabbits under the car. And he'll go check it, which I quickly opposed as I seen this stuff on horror movies and it never goes well. And I was also so scared to be left in that car just for a second. As soon as he opened the door, the flashlight were whatever the thing I saw on the woods lit. I was so scared. It was laying on the floor, the light was facing our car. Then I heard the scariest sound I ever heard in my life. It was my mom's voice singing. But we both knew that whatever that thing isn't my mama, the voice sounded disgusting and distorted the voice was stringy and it sounds like it was pretending and trying to imitate human language. The voice lasted for one minute and the last part sounded so terrifying as it sounded like it's shrieking from pain but almost like laughing at the same time. He closed the door locked all of it, and sat in the driver's seat, he was shaking. We shared an eye contact, he was so pale and looked so terrified. We were both sitting in pure fear and silence as the radio signal isn't that clear around that area. That night we drove back home and always told me to forget everything that happened and pray every night. Hello everyone. First of all, let me say that this is not an experience during which I saw anything. It was something I heard. Now here's the thing when it comes to nighttime sounds. I was practically raised in the woods. I've spent a huge amount of time out there, both day and night. I wouldn't call myself a woodsman, mostly because I don't have a flannel shirt unbuttoned halfway down my sternum or a big bushy beard. But all of my experience with the woods and the various sounds you hear in them are from Appalachia, the Pacific Northwest, and New England. 
I have no real experience with nocturnal animals found in the southwesternness, which is where this happened. I'm not familiar with the desert creatures, though I've heard that Chosen One partied with them occasionally. Since I didn't see anything, I can't tell you what it was. I probably couldn't tell you what it was even if I had seen it, but it's the sound. I've heard all kinds of nocturnal animal and insect sounds, and I can identify a good number of them. But whatever this was, it chilled told me to my bones. I was visiting some friends of mine who live near Van Horn, TX. One morning at about 4 AM, I was outside smoking a cigarette. I started hearing what sounded like a few dogs barking off of a distance. Nothing out of the ordinary, one of their neighbors had two or three of them. I figured they'd just seen some type of animal or something that got them all excited. Thing was, as I continued smoking, I started to pick out something different that was mixed in with the barking. It caught my attention, but nothing more. I just happened to notice it. But over the course of the next couple of minutes the dogs stopped barking, but there were still that same sound oh. It was gradually drawing closer to where I was. If I had to describe it, I would say that it was something trying to sound like a dog, but not quite getting it right. It continued to slowly move closer until it sounded like it was right inside the nearby tree line, about 30 feet away from me and, of course, just far enough away to not be within the reach of the exterior light on the side of their garage. What struck me is that the sound seemed to be coming from higher than I was tall, but I could hear it moving around on the ground. I went inside and stayed there. As I said, I'm familiar with nocturnal animal sounds. I've heard coyotes and wolves and bears that all seemed like they were very close by while camping, but this sound scared me. I'm not really looking for answers because no one here was there to have heard it. Best you can do is go off of my description, and my description might be pretty awful. But I'm told it didn't seem to help them at all, cause they had no idea what it could be. Obviously, I'm on this particular subreddit for a reason, but who knows? A bad mimic trying to bark. That's just what it sounded like to me. Sorry this was kind of long, but I wanted to do it justice. The first time and only time I ever encountered one of these beings I was 12 years old hunting on a large ranch on the Texas-Mexico border in Del Rio, Texas. It was early in the morning before sunrise and my dad dropped me off at the deer stand before the feeders went off. As I was sitting in the stand I got this weird gut feeling that something was watching me. At first I thought it was just 12 year old me being scared of being alone in the dark but the feeling grew more and more intense. It was dark so I decided to open the door and shine my light and see if anything was there and as I was closing the door out of the corner of my eye I saw something dart away at an incredible speed. I just figured it was a jack rabbit or coyote or something. I never got the feeling again the rest of the morning. That evening I went to the stand about 4. 30 so I could hunt before the sun went down. As the sun was setting about 6. Oh, oh I got the eerie feeling again but this time it was more intense than before. I looked through all the windows and couldn't see anything standing around so I just shrugged it off. A few minutes later I had to take a leak and the sun was fading so dark you could hardly see the deer at the feeder. I opened the door and in front of me was a mangled looking coyote with hardly any hair and missing hide around its stomach. It was standing on two back legs and as soon as it saw me it darted away again at incredible speed and I have never went hunting on that ranch again. Skinwalker Experience in the Sierras This happened to me last August, when I was driving down from Washington to San Diego with some friends. The three of us were camping in cool spots along the way, and at one point during our trip we stopped to camp for a night near the Sierra Nevada mountains. My friend had heard that the sunrise's reflection over the mountains is beautiful, 
so we decided to wake up around 5 a.m. the next morning to watch. That time came, and we reluctantly left our tent and walked about 10 minutes from our, pretty remote, campsite over to a long road and stretch of desert with a great view of the mountains. We stood there for about 20 minutes. Then, as I was looking across the distance, something caught my eye. It seemed to be some type of animal, but a weird size and super white. At first I thought it was a bunny, but then decided that there was no way as it was way too large for that. The figure was maybe the size of a large dog, bright white, and moved in kind of an unnatural way, like jerky and fast. I remember the face being really weird, kind of indescribable. It gave me goosebumps as I stared at it, trying to figure out what I was seeing. I looked over to my friends, and asked them if they were seeing the thing that I had described. When I looked back, I couldn't see it anymore. Neither of my friends had seen this figure, but they shared a look and one of them did a motion like two fingers walking on his arm. The other nodded and they told me they didn't know what it was but we should just go back to our campsite. After that experience, I asked them what they weren't telling me a bunch of times. I kind of thought they were playing a joke on me but I was still persistent with my questions. They told me to drop it until we made it to San Diego, and promised they would explain it when we got there. A few days later, as we drove into San Diego late at night, I brought it up again. That's when I learned about the skinwalker for the first time. They told me that they've read stories that sound exactly like what I saw, and noted how weird it was that I described the figure like that, without ever having heard of the skinwalker before. I was so freaked out, and I was glad they waited to tell me. They told me that they waited to share because they didn't want to risk anything by thinking or talking about it. I'm not sure if I saw the skinwalker that day, or if maybe my tired eyes were playing tricks on me. I'm just definitely not eager to return to the area anytime soon. Skinwalker or Ghost? This is a story that I remember perfectly as a child and I never forget it because I still have the doubt that it was what happened. When I was visiting the house of some relatives I remember that at about 5 or 4 in the morning, I woke up and I went down to the living room where my brother was with some cousins playing FIFA on the PS2. I waited to play me too although they went to nowhere, leaving me alone. FIFA was never one of my games so I changed it to Shadow the Hedgehog. At this moment, 20 or 25 minutes will have passed when I began to hear soft knocks like footsteps on the floor above, made up of three rooms, a small room where the stairs were, my room and another where my brother slept. I remember that all the house was dark except for the living room, the bathroom and the kitchen. Since I was too afraid of the dark, the noises scared me but I thought it was just my imagination and that perhaps it was idiotic. Until I heard those steps like if someone walked from above slowly, making the wood creak, which although he did it commonly was not as often as that time, it was intentional. The steps continued and I did not find the courage to get up from the chair and check. I was in that state for approximately one hour listening and raising the volume of the game to distract myself until I heard the voice of my brother in the room upstairs calling me for me name, which I do not want to reveal. There were four calls where I asked him what he wanted from the foot of the stairs, looking at that immense darkness. Then he was silent. My brother used to make many jokes when it was dark scaring me so I decided to stay there asking what I wanted every time he called me. After the silence I started playing again, until about 10 minutes later my brother would enter with my cousins, in a state of panic I ran and whispered to him is there someone upstairs. Listen to footsteps they asked me of everything. They searched each room with kitchen knives and broomsticks in hand but nothing. To this day I wonder what had gone up there and if something or someone was watching me from the stairs. I fought a skinwalker and somehow survived. 
This happened 10 years ago when I was staying with my then girlfriend out in Texas. We were staying at this farmhouse owned by her father, hoping to get it back in shape after years of being left to the elements. It began stalking us almost as soon as we arrived in that it took the form of a coyote and began following us everywhere whenever we left the farmhouse. If I went to the old barn, it was there. If my girlfriend went to the old well and pump, it'd follow her too. We didn't think much of it, assuming it was just a normal coyote that was overly friendly. I should have shot it while I had the chance. Three nights in and something hit the fan hard. We were about to hunker down for the night when this weird sickening scream moved through the house and into the bedroom we were staying in. It was almost unnatural in the way it moved, like the very sound itself had a mind of its own. Then we heard a knocking at the front door and a thin raspy voice spoke out. Oh you poor dears, I hope I didn't scare you. Let me in and I can apologize properly. It wasn't a natural voice. It sounded like one of those old voice recorders where it's obvious it's not a human speaking. My girlfriend wanted to go see who it was, not wanting to believe it couldn't be anything other than a human. I stopped her and told her that whatever that thing was clearly wasn't human. I mean, that scream followed by that unnatural voice? Something was outside wanting in. She just looked at me with this face as she realized what I meant by it. Oh please do hurry up dears, it's awfully cold out here. It was the same voice and my girlfriend immediately recognized it. That's my grandmother, she told me, but, she died years ago. We both started to panic when whatever it was started banging on the front door to the house. It was loud enough that it seemed to be coming from the bedroom door, let alone the other side of the building. Then another ear-piercing scream shot through the house followed by more pounding on the outer walls and doors. We started to panic as we didn't know what to do. I thought about calling the police, but realized there wasn't any reception this far out and there weren't any landlines installed either. Running to the car wasn't an option. We still didn't know what that thing was and I didn't want to find out if we could outrun it. Then we heard a window smash in one of the rooms below followed by yet another blood-curdling scream. It was inside. I don't know why I did this but I forced my girlfriend to hide under the bed before running out of the room and down the stairs. Sure enough, one of the kitchen windows had been smashed in as if someone or something was attempting to get through it. Below the smashed window was some table salt that had spilled over. It had clearly tried to get in, but I couldn't see it anywhere. It was only then did I see it outside the window, looking back at me. It was tall enough that it had to bend down to look through the window back at me, where it looked at me with the eyes that glowed a deep red. It smiled at me, showing its razor-sharp teeth, before speaking, Oh dearie me, I seem to have made a mess. Be a dear and let me in so I can clean it up for you. I just froze in that spot, scared out of my mind at this thing I was staring at. I just stood there as it tried to make another attempt at climbing through the window, but stopped as it noticed the spilled salt blocking its way. I don't really know why, but something in me put two and two together and I ran towards it, grabbed the container of salt and started throwing salt at the monster in front of me. It screamed as the salt hit it and ran off into the darkness. Its screaming snapped me out of it and I immediately ran back upstairs to make sure my girlfriend was okay. We spent the rest of the night locked inside the bedroom, praying it would never come back. We still have the farm, but have never gone back. Neither of us want to talk about it, but I just can't get that night out of my head. I am never going to forget what happened. There was a story I heard years back when I was still a kid. For the record, I grew up in a small town in Ohio where weird stuff like this tends to be the norm, though growing up no one really thought much of it. It started when a family who owned a ranch just outside of town suddenly sold the property and moved away, 
which itself was odd since there didn't really seem to be any reason for the sudden change. The new owners moved in and about a week later disappeared without a trace, leaving the property abandoned. This all happened when I was too young to actually remember any of it, though obviously everybody knew about the property and the rumors of skinwalkers driving the old owners out on top of being the cause of the new owners disappearing. No one actually believed it until a few years ago, when a bunch of high school kids decided to stay the night at the property. Apparently, they thought it a good idea to stay in the barn, despite or perhaps because of all the more recent rumors of people going missing on or near the property. They didn't disappear. At first. They returned to school over the next few days, but acted weird. It was like they weren't even the same people. A few kids disappeared before this specific group decided they wanted to return to the property. They never came back. These being high school kids, a search and rescue op was sent out to look for them. The weird thing was, many of those sent out to look for them thought they could hear them or see them for brief moments whenever they searched in or near the property. They eventually did find all the kids that went missing but unfortunately they had all been killed in what looked like a wild animal attack. To this day it's widely regarded as a confirmed skinwalker attack by most everyone, myself included. I mean, it sue as hell fits with the legends surrounding the skinwalkers. The stories below contain the names of individuals. For the sake of privacy and anonymity, Names have been changed or omitted. I learned a long time ago that skinwalkers are not something to be trifled with. Quite the opposite in fact. They are terrifying and dangerous. My encounter happened in Oklahoma a few years back. I was working for this construction crew and we'd been hired to do some work on this cabin some rich dick wanted renovating. Simple enough work in that it was just some new inner walls new insulation a new roof and some solar panels for off-grid power. Other than being in the middle of literal nowhere, it wasn't difficult work. It was two weeks work and solid pay, so it wasn't much of an issue with us. That came on the third day of work. One of the guys on the crew, Jamie, was already there. That was odd on its own since he was always late, but what made it even odder was the way he was acting throughout the day. Then he just upped and disappeared around lunch time. Again, that itself was odd since he normally worked through lunch so we didn't expect him to just disappear. Me and another one from the crew, Barry, went off to find him while the rest got on with the work. We went to the trucks but couldn't find him and we were about to make our way back to the shed when Barry pointed something out. There was a trail of blood leading from the trucks into the forest. Obviously, we thought something happened to Jamie and followed the trail. It didn't take us long to find out what happened to him. We found his body. From the looks of it, he had been there all night. Barry almost threw up at the smell of the body. I was about to tell him to run back and get the others when I heard Jake call out to us. But, he was laying dead in front of us. Then Barry screamed and I saw why. Standing in front of us was some twisted version of Jamie. It didn't look right or natural. It had his face, but it was all pasty and then flaking off. There were horns on his. Its head and it had this open smile that showed fangs rather than normal human teeth. It was horrifying. It just stood there, staring at us while drooling. Neither of us are scared easily. But seven both me and Barry started running the moment it started walking towards us. Not 15 minutes we returned with the rest of the crew and a few guns we kept in the trucks. That thing was still there, eating Jamie. I was carrying one of the guns as was our boss. We both fired a few rounds at it, but it didn't even notice them. Then the chief said something I couldn't quite make out before firing another shot. It was hit and went down before getting up, howling slash screaming at us before running away on all fours. 
It was still wearing his face through all of this. Jamie had been torn to shreds and his death was eventually ruled as an animal attack, but to this day I wouldn't consider whatever that thing was an animal. I'd later ask the chief what he said before taking the shot, but he would refuse to ever talk about it. We managed to complete the renovations without any more issues, but I later found out that the guy who owned it went missing during a stay at the cabin. I never want to see that thing again. I've always enjoyed camping in places where people ought not to go. Caves no one but me can get to. Cliffs considered too dangerous by other experienced climbers and I even spent a night on top of Mount Everest. To say I make sometimes undeniably stupid decisions is an understatement. But this one time really had me ruined. There's this bit of land in Arizona that is said to have belonged to some Native American tribe some time ago. It's really barren, but there is this old house on there that seems to have been abandoned for decades if not longer. I'd long planned to stay there for a bit, and since the pandemic has kept everyone indoors I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to spend a week there. August comes round and I make my way to that old house. I enter through the front door and see it. There's a coyote just inside. Great. I didn't know there were coyotes in the area. I slowly back out and away from it, right up until it stood on its hind legs. This coyote stood up onto its hind legs. Then it talked. I've been waiting for you Julie. Why don't you come on in? I screamed and started running. I got maybe 200 yards away from the house before tripping over. I looked behind me and saw it leaving the house. It didn't look like a coyote anymore. This is hard to explain, but it looked as if it were turning into me. I didn't stay to get a good look as I got up and ran the one and a half miles back to my car, I'd hiked to the house. I managed to get away and never saw it again. But then again, I'm never going back to that house again either. This is an encounter I had in 1975, a few months after I returned home from Vietnam. Simply put, I was starting to grow tired of living in New York City after spending several years in that messed up war and decided I'd rather go out and live by myself for a while. This led me to living in the absolute wilderness of Texas, far from where the ranchers and really anyone else would go. Living rough wasn't an issue for me, Obviously, anything is better than having your ass handed to you by enemy forces. So all I had during that period of time was a small wood axe, a handgun and a few boxes of matches and ammo to see me through my self-imposed exile. For a short while, everything seemed okay. I was finally able to get my thoughts together and make some sort of attempt to deal with everything that happened during the war. But then I started to notice someone occasionally walking through the particular area I chose to stay in. Thing is, I had chosen one of the most isolated parts of Texas since I didn't want a chance encountering someone and having to play nice, so seeing someone this far out was a little concerning to me. Problem was, the few attempts I made in following them always ended up with me running into a pack of coyotes or somehow losing them despite the relatively flat and open area we were in. A month after I started seeing this person, I started hearing screams at night. But not screams of terror, I know what they sound like. Instead, it sounded like someone was trying to scare me away from a distance, or perhaps warning me that they were coming after me. The screams were always followed by coyote howls and I only ever heard the screams at night. For very obvious reasons I was starting to consider leaving the area and returning to New York and what little family I had left there, but then the incident happened and I guess the decision was made for me. I'm talking about my encounter with it. To this day I'm not entirely sure what it was, but looking back with what I know now, I have a few guesses. This happened first week of October, on what would ultimately be my last night in Texas. 
It had already gotten dark by this point and I was expecting another night of hearing those damn screams. First thing I notice now is that I never heard a sound. There were no screams, at least none that I can remember. It was quite, right up until it came into my camp. I'd barely slept and had no real desire to do so, so I just sat by the campfire I'd made when I saw something approach. At first I was relieved at it just being another coyote. It wouldn't bother with me since it was probably just curious about the fire and the smell of the meat I was cooking. I ignored it assuming it would just wander off, that is until it started getting closer to the fire. That's when I noticed its matted fur and gray and flaky skin. It looked ill, hell on a closer look it barely looked like a coyote at all. It got close to the fire, turned to me and then smiled. Then it stood up on its hind legs and walked through the fire towards me, still smiling at me. The look in its eyes changed from curiosity to the sort of malevolent intent someone wears only when they intend to kill someone. Instead of screaming like I assume it thought I would, I lifted my handgun and emptied a full clip into whatever it was. After emptying the clip in my gun, I turned to grab my axe and turned back to see that it had gone. There was ash and still burning embers that followed it trailed towards me and then back the way it came. I don't know how, but it must have moved faster than anything I've ever seen to be able to disappear that quickly. I didn't take a chance at seeing whatever that thing was and left that night. I stayed in New York for a while before moving to Japan. For all the things I saw in Vietnam that have stayed with me, I don't think anything could compare to what I saw that night in Texas and I refuse to forget it. Once upon a time, I had a great uncle who lived out in Nevada with his wife and two kids. This was in the late 1800s and they were practically on the frontier, something that I guess seemed really appealing to them. Anyway, they often had trouble with all the usual groups you'd expect them to deal with, from bandits to Native Americans. This meant that early on they were forced to move around a lot due to those reasons alone, let alone any number of other issues they had to face. Eventually, however, they did manage to settle down on a piece of land not too far from where the frontier met what was then the US border and they got a farm going. This next part is mostly just family legend, though I like to imagine it's somewhat true. You see, the land they settled on was said to be considered evil land or taboo land for the Native Americans of the area, since their legend spoke of evil spirits that inhabited that particular stretch of land. They still had the occasional issues with bandits and the like, but since it was far from being the true frontier it ended up being the sort of problem solved with a few rounds of ammo and a quick trip into the nearest town to collect a small bounty. Content with their new home and no longer having to deal with bandits or Native Americans, my great uncle and his family did pretty well for themselves for a few years before the events surrounding his death happened. By events, I mean a series of short encounters with what can only be described as a skinwalker if the family legend is accurate. It began one autumn during the harvest when my great uncle began seeing a Native American woman on the edge of his property. That in itself was weird since they never came onto that piece of land, though he guessed she was one of the many outcasts that had been rumored to be wandering around that part of the US. Regardless, She'd never stay long and would often flee upon spotting and being spotted by my great uncle. Then things started to get stranger, and not in the good way. They started to get concerned over the increasing coyote and mountain lion activity in the area, which for obvious reasons pushed thoughts about that strange woman to one side. My great uncle raised cattle for a living. So the biggest concern was that coyotes or mountain lions would begin picking off his cattle one by one. Being the rancher that he was, him and his eldest son began hunting the predators and would occasionally kill a few mountain lions. Weirdest thing was that they never came across any coyotes despite hearing them all the time. 
What they would see often enough was the woman from the edge of the property and a handful of other Native American women, most of whom looked elderly and ragged. They would tend to keep to themselves and avoid my great uncle and his son, fleeing any time they encountered them. This continued well into winter, right up until the first incident happened. After a few months of searching, my great uncle finally saw a coyote in one of the valleys near his farm. He raised his gun, took aim and shot the animal, but despite what he considered a clean kill he was unable to find the body. There was plenty of blood, sure, but it looked as though the body just up and vanished. That night, several of his cattle went missing. There was a mix of coyote and human tracks with the blame obviously falling to the Native American women he'd been seeing. He came to the belief that they'd been somehow raising coyotes like most people do with dogs and that's why they hadn't seen any until recently. Over the following weeks, more cattle would disappear until only a handful were left despite many attempts by my great uncle to keep the women and coyotes from getting to them. It came to a head when he was out searching for them one day. He saw a group of them and fired a few shots towards them and supposedly hit one. Even though he didn't mean to actually shoot any of them, having the intentions of simply scaring them off, he just hoped it would mean they would avoid his farm from then on out. That night, they came not for the cattle but for him. From what his wife and two sons would later describe, a group of Native American women surrounded their homestead and demanded him to come out. Seeing that they were just a bunch of unarmed women, he obviously came out and started shooting at them in an attempt to scare them off while his wife and two sons stayed inside. They watched helplessly from the windows as the women turned from elderly looking women into tall monsters with gray skin and monstrous teeth and horns before proceeding to tear him apart. He tried shooting them before ultimately deciding to try and get back inside, but they were too fast and got to him before he even had a chance to realize what was going on. After killing him, they continued to stalk the homestead until dawn, seemingly expecting one of the others to come out and help my great uncle. Neither the two sons or the wife wanted to go outside with them out there and were frozen in fear inside the building itself. When the sun rose the following morning, the women slash monsters all left, leaving the mauled body of my great uncle behind with his frightened and traumatized family. They very quickly packed what valuables they had and left that day, never to return, and chose to return to England where my great uncle was from. The legend has been passed down the family ever since. I live in the UK now, but I grew up in West Virginia. The reason I live in the UK now is because of the two encounters I had with a skinwalker when I was younger. The first encounter happened when I was 10. My grandfather owned a corn farm back 20 years ago when the first encounter happened. The reason why me and my parents were there was for a big family gathering to celebrate the birthday of one of my aunts. Now. It's important to note that my grandfather's farm had three parts to it. There was the house itself with the road leading up to it, the large cornfields and then a small patch of wooded area that separated the far side of the cornfield with the nearby neighbors. Me and my two cousins were playing in the wooded area, fighting with sticks and other stuff you'd expect a 10, 9 and 6 year old to do, when we heard my mom calling us from the house. My two cousins immediately ran towards the house, and I was about to follow them when I thought I could hear my father calling for me from the other side of the wooded area. This wasn't strange since him and my grandfather liked to hunt in and around there since it was a popular feeding spot for deer, the small pond probably didn't hurt either. So of course I started going to where I thought he was. I got past this large rock when I heard my father again but this time coming from the rock I just passed. I was a little confused, that is until I turned around and saw it. This nine foot tall monster looking right at me. It was tall, had pale skin that was flaking off, and antlers on top of a grotesque head that snarled at me. 
that image is forever burned into my mind. Even more after it lunged at me. That's the last thing I remember that day. This horrific monster lunging at me. I was later told that my father came out looking for me and found me laying unconscious on the floor covered in blood, this thing carrying me in its arms. He took a warning shot which caused the monster to drop me and run off. I was covered in blood, but was somehow uninjured. My second encounter happened two years later. By then, the wooded area had been cleared and turned into a pig farm owned and ran by my grandfather. The problem was some of his pigs were going missing and he suspected coyotes were somehow getting to them. So my parents and I moved to the farm during summer break so my father and grandfather could try and track down the animals responsible for taking the pigs. This happened about a week after we moved in. For obvious reasons, I wouldn't near to where the wooded area used to be, instead I was happy just walking through the cornfield towards the old barn even though I knew I wasn't allowed there. I didn't go far however before the smell hit me. It was similar to the smell of that monster from two years before. I tried to dismiss it as just nerves playing tricks with my mind or some stupid thing like that, right up until I saw it. It was the monster that had attacked me before. But it hadn't noticed me. It took everything I had not to make a sound as I tried to back away. It was only when it stood up from its crouch that I screamed and ran as fast as I could back to the house. I barged into the door and did my best to tell my father about seeing it again through all the crying. To this day, I wish I stopped him and my grandfather from leaving. They both grabbed their hunting rifles and went to find it, but they never returned. We never found out what happened to them. Six months after that, my mother and I moved to England where she was from and to this day I refused to return to West Virginia. I never want to see that monster again. I live in a small town in South Carolina and as you might expect, it's as boring as hell. I, however, spend a lot of my time camping so it never really bothered me. Well. This particular camping trip took place in a popular campsite that was closed for the winter, it closed between the months of October through to March and this happened late November, and it's something that has stuck with me ever since. I got my tent, a small stove, the rest of the camping equipment I needed and permission from the owner of the campsite, a good friend of mine, and quickly set up for an overnight stay near to a community hall-like building usually reserved for parties and the like. It was going well. It was only around after it got dark when strange things began to happen. For one, I started to hear wolf howls. That was a new one to me, not really, I grew up in Cali before moving, since there are no wolves in South Carolina. It didn't really alarm me since it sounded like they were way off, but it did have me curious as to how wolves got this far east. I listened to the howls for about another hour before I decided to try and get some sleep, but that didn't last too long. I don't know how long it was watching me for, but I was woken up by the howl of a wolf coming from the nearby community hall. It was, as I thought at the time, a single wolf. Looking back, I wasn't as scared as I should have been and that was probably because of the gun I had on me. Minutes went by and I didn't hear anything and I assumed it had moved on when I heard it. A low voice coming from just outside my tent. I know you're in there, it said, why don't you come on out so we can meet properly. For some reason I just froze up in fear. I can't explain it, but something about that voice just had me all locked up. Don't keep me waiting friend, it said through the tent. But I couldn't move. I wanted to reach for my gun, but I just couldn't reach it despite it being right next to me. Oh, come now friend, you don't need the gun. It wouldn't work on me anyway friend. Hearing that was the worst part. Or would have been had it not immediately followed up by howling exactly like the wolf and started sniffing the tent. This went on for the rest of the night. To this day, 
I'm glad it didn't decide to just tear through my tent and have no desire to find out why it didn't do that. I dreamt of skinwalkers long before I actually ever saw one. Well, I say dream. It was always more of a recurring nightmare. In this nightmare, I would find myself on this road surrounded by forest. No matter how far I walked I would never come across any signs of other people. No cars, no gas stations, nothing. Not even a sign that would tell me where I was. After what felt like hours of walking, I eventually get to a solitary street light just randomly placed out in the middle of nowhere. However, it was always placed in the middle of this road rather than to the side. It was always on, of course, and the light allowed me to see just enough to catch a glimpse of a figure out in the darkness just beyond the reach of the street light opposite of me. I felt complied to call out to try and call out for help from this mysterious figure. But then it would turn around as it noticed me and step into the light. What I saw would always make me sick. A tall thing with pale gray skin, a rotten deer's head with a large set of antlers and long gangly arms and legs. I stood there, frozen in fear and sick to my stomach as it started coming towards me. It would eventually reach out to me and grabbed me by the head with one hand picking me up as the other arm prepared to decapitate me, but I would always wake up right before it actually hit me. The dream stopped a few years ago when I had my real life encounter. It was late on Boxing Day and I was driving home after spending Christmas with my parents, I had to start work three days after Christmas Day, when my car suddenly stopped. I checked the fuel and I realized I was out of fuel. I had just passed a gas station not 20 minutes prior and had an empty fuel can in my boot, so after retrieving it I started the walk back to the gas station. It took longer than I expected and I started to suspect that the gas station was a little further than I thought when I saw it. Ahead of me was a pair of street lights. Unlike in my dream they were placed normally alongside the road, but what I saw lit up was even more horrifying than any nightmare I had previously. Lit up on the road was that thing I saw in my dreams, holding another person. I saw it decapitate him, then turn around and notice me, but with this huge grin on its face and this look in its eyes. Oh God, I'll never forget that look. I don't know how or why, but I just started running back to my car and locked myself inside. What I didn't know at first was that it had followed me and that it saw me lock myself into my car but I quickly noticed when it tried to approach from behind me. Now, I always carry a handgun in my car, just in case I ever need it and I did what I thought would be a good idea. I rolled down my window and fired a few shots at it. I think, missing it, but scaring it off for the time being. But it always came back. The weirdest thing was that it never kept the same shape. It would sometimes look like a coyote, or a person or a deer, but it always had the head of a deer, long gangly limbs and that disgusting pale skin that seemed like it was rotting off. Sometimes, though, it moved its mouth as if it were trying to speak to me but I never actually heard any sounds come from it, whatever it was. Eventually, it seemed to lose interest in me and left the way it came just as the sun started to rise. I stayed in my car for another few hours before making another attempt at finding the gas station. Fortunately, I never saw it again and I'm thankful for that. I never want to see it again. This happened shortly before I retired as a police officer. I'm not going to mention where it happened or who I am. Since I'd rather not be hounded about it, but I do feel the need to share it somewhere and this seems like the right place. So, a few months before I retired I was patrolling some back-end country roads just outside the town I was in. It was easy enough work, not much in way of trouble and very rarely was any trouble worth more work than a ticket or two. You know, 
simple stuff like some dumbass teens thinking the roads were perfect for forgetting the speed limit or someone having a broken tail light. It was easy enough work and honestly I preferred spending the last few months of my working life with a bit of peace and quiet, especially after spending so many years serving the police force. But this one incident, it stuck with me and I doubt I'd ever forget it. Now, this all started with the disappearance of a local native kid who ran away from home. His father turned out to be a real prick towards his kid, so I hardly blame the kid for running. Thing is, he was found a few days after being reported missing. Unfortunately, he was found dead in the woods, apparently mauled to death by a wild animal. It happens sometimes, especially around here since we have a fair few coyotes packs. The reason I bring this up is because it turns out the kid was actually close to this woman known for being weird. She lived out in those woods and rarely interacted with anyone else. But she and the kid were close and one of my colleagues saw fit to ask her if she saw him after he went missing. He came back and said she denied ever even knowing him, a lie since everyone knew about his frequent visits to her shack. But since his death was ruled as a result of an animal attack, no one ever followed up on her. Until my encounter. This happened a week after the kid was found. I was on night patrol near the forest where he was found and the woman lived when I got a report of a traffic collision a few miles from my location. Since I was the closest I was called to the scene as first responder. As expected, I was first on the scene. The car was there and I immediately noticed the blood on the front bumper and all over the road. At first I though the guy struck an animal and called it in thinking he hit someone. That's when I noticed no one was around. The driver had seemingly gone off somewhere, probably running from the scene. I was about to call it in when I heard someone scream from the forest, right side of myself, and my training immediately kicked in. I pulled my gun and flashed light after calling in what had just happened and went straight to where the sound was. It took less than five minutes to find the source. It was who I presumed was the driver of the car, lying on the ground covered in blood with it standing over him. It is of course the skinwalker, I only knew about them from local legends up until this point. It looked like a twisted amalgamation of a human and a coyote, and frankly smelled like it was rotting. It was covered in blood and was snarling at me to go away. It actually spoke in this unnatural way. I fired two shots at it when it tried to make a move towards me, but neither shot seemed to stop it despite hitting the damn thing. I fired another two shots, before it raised its head to look behind me and running off. Another two patrol cars had arrived and had heard my gunshots. All four men had seen that thing just as it ran away, with three of them going to pursue whatever it was. The other and I stayed to secure the body of the driver, he was already dead. Long story short, the three officers chased the thing down to the old lady's shack, where it supposedly transformed back into the woman and was promptly killed. I don't know what really happened, since none of them would really talk about it. But a journal found not long after seemed to convince the higher-ups that she had been responsible for the death of the kid as well as the driver. The whole skinwalker part though? Quietly hidden from public records. The official reports were made to blame her and her dog on the deaths. I don't miss being an officer after remembering that case and a few others from earlier in my career. My dad spent some time living in a small town called Gallup in New Mexico. Gallup neighbors the Navajo Nation to the west and the Zuni Rees to the south. He used to go on hikes alone every weekend, and often, foolishly, stayed to see the sunset and found himself trekking back to his car in the night. I visited and went on a few of these hikes with him. And I can say that there were many times when our car was the only one parked and it truly felt that we were alone in the vast desert or canyon. My dad shared that one night, 
he came across what looked like large animal footprints in the snow. But nothing like he had ever seen in his life. And he said that they were spaced out as if it had been walking on two feet. He swears it. He rushed back to his car and was obviously spooked. The town is full of Navajo people, and when he tried to tell his story to someone, they appeared afraid and immediately shut him down. They said that they don't talk about these things. That's how I've ended up fascinated by stories in groups like this one. I've known about skinwalkers my entire life. I'm not a Native American or anything, just grew up close to a reservation. But I didn't encounter one until several weeks after I turned 24. Me and my dad would often go out hunting deer. He never brought meat, always preferring to source his own meat rather than risk buying it from a store or farm. He also hates factory farms, due to their treatment of farm animals. So when he called me up to ask me if I wanted to go hunting with him, I thought nothing of it and agreed to go with him. We agreed to spend a day hunting in this area my dad loved to go hunting in since it would see a lot of deer. The morning we spent hunting was unusually quiet. That area of forest usually had plenty of animals, not just deer, passing through as a lot of different natural trails met up and intersected there. It wasn't just the wildlife. My dad was unusually quiet too. Even when we were driving to that art of the forest, there was a road with a parking spot for hunters about three miles south of where we were. Normally, he wouldn't shut up about the small farm he had. He grew carrots, potatoes and a few other crops, or about the various tractors he would fix up for many of the local farmers. But he was quiet all day. The entire thing felt off to me and I didn't like it. I straight up asked him if he was okay and he took a while to answer. He simply told me he was okay, just preoccupied with something. It wasn't like him at all. I was about to ask him when we heard a coyote pack go insane off in the distance. That isn't odd in itself and the area has several prominent wolf and coyote packs whose territories all meet up here, but it certainly didn't help the uneasy feeling that was evident. I turned back to my dad and he was as pale as porcelain. He just sat there, frozen in fear upon hearing the coyotes off in the distance. That wasn't like him at all. We heard coyotes all the time. He kept looking all over the place, as if he were expecting something he didn't want to see walk into view. That's when he focused on a spot right in front of us. At first I didn't know what he was looking at. I tried to find whatever it was but gave up. It was only when I was about to turn to him and ask when I spotted it. There was a figure hiding in the forest, just far enough away that I couldn't make out any real details. It, it looked like a person. It wasn't uncommon to see other hunters out in the forest, but whoever this figure was didn't seem like a hunter. I turned to my dad and asked who that person was. He simply continued to sit there silently, staring at the person in front of us. It felt like a lifetime before we heard the coyotes again, this time a lot closer to where we were. Whoever was watching us heard the coyotes as well, but apparently took more exception to hearing them. Without any warning, it let out this loud, guttural call no human could possibly make. What it did next haunts me to this day. Without missing a beat, it got on its hands and feet and began moving away from us and towards the direction of the coyotes. It looked so unnatural, like it really was just a person trying to run on all fours. The last thing I saw was whatever it was begin running like a coyote at full speed. It wasn't even five minutes later when me and my dad could hear the coyotes go insane as they tried to fight something off. Neither of us said anything as we practically ran back to the car we used to get there. My dad never went hunting in that forest after that. He passed away last year, never once talking about what we had seen that day. My sister and I were heading back home from the beach. She was asleep in the passenger seat and I was stuck driving in the foothills for an hour. 
It was about 9 p.m., so the highway was fairly empty. It was just miles of nothing but hills and open lands. From afar, I saw a creature on the side of the road, which I first assumed to be a deer, there's deer in the area. It stood there till I was a few feet away and that's when it decided to sprint in front of my car. I caught a glimpse of what looked like a naked human-like creature, it was well adjusted to walking on all fours. It had the hands and feet of a human, but pointy ears like a dog. It just looked like some giant, flesh-colored creature the size of a large deer. The thing that freaked me out the most was that it seemed to have glitched as it crossed the road. It all happened so fast, it gave me a disgusting feeling in my gut and I could feel my blood drop to my feet. A few weeks later, I saw the same kind of creature. This time the incident happened a couple of blocks away from where I live. I happened to live in the rural countryside, where there's nothing but grapevines for miles. I was making my way to the freeway when the same kind of creature, ran in front of my car. I saw it glitch the same way but this time into a fence. I was in shock cause I had just seen it run through a fence as if it was transparent. I was so shaken up, I didn't want to go back home that night. I'm not confirming that what I saw were skinwalkers, but I'm just sharing my personal experience of what I saw. At the time, I was very fascinated with skinwalkers and often talked about them which could have possibly manifested them into my presence. My job is in the middle of the woods and cornfield. It's a juvenile facility and the kids told me they're at SW and a W in the fields and woods and everyone had stories and encounters. They've heard their names called deer staring at them from the kitchen window and it's scary at night because there is little light outside. I'm terrified because I have to do the 5 p.m. to 1 a.m. and I'm not trying to get eaten. What do you think I should do? I live in Iowa on the corner closest to Missouri and Illinois. My grandpa is Native American and refuses to have the conversation with me about it. And I was told if you said it then they will come for you. The whole facility is haunted and it's been confirmed. I don't know what to do. Activity in the middle of a national park. My family and I have been living in the middle of Missouri for a couple years now and things have been crazy, to say the least. A list of our experiences. It started out pretty passive stuff. The sound of old-fashioned radios and music boxes. Despite looking everywhere including our crawl space beneath the house, we have never found anything. Everyone in the house has heard this sound on separate occasions despite not everyone believe it was necessarily something paranormal. Tapping. Windows. Walls. On backs. We don't have rats, we've checked, no branches up on trees or on ground windows. E. Our windows are feet off the ground because we live on a steep hill. Scratches. I didn't believe in this crap and acted like a D-head and was trying to freak my sisters out. The lights flickered rapidly and I was laying on my back on my phone, and I felt a burning sensation. I thought it might have a tick so I asked my sister to check, only to find three scratches. I'll attach a picture in the comments. This is when we got my mother involved, who got in contact with a childhood friend who happened to be a cardinal on Facebook. He told us to have a priest bless the house, and to get me checked for mental illness, which I do have, but don't necessarily understand why I would need to check for mental illness when I had visible scratches. Things started to happen on the daily after we heard a woman shriek for 7 full seconds outside our window around midnight. We were paralyzed for about a second and bolted to get our dad, and the gun, we have had escapee prisoners on the loose around our area before and a lot of meth heads who wander around our street, so we didn't chalk it up to something spooky, but rather something we could shoot at. We checked the entire perimeter of our property, and nothing. We didn't sleep, static in the corner of my room. 
Almost every single night I heard static from the same corner. I took back my dresser and got so tired of it I unplugged everything in my room because I thought it was something else explainable. The TV hum or something. But it's still just static. My father came in. And he heard. My sister heard it and it caused her not to be able to sleep in my room cause it kept her up and made her lightheaded. One night. The static got too much and I went to sleep with my sister. I'm 17 but this thing was getting old, and I was thoroughly scared of our house at this point. We seriously were so scared of our own property, we bought a blow up bed so I could sleep in sister's room when stuff got too much. I had to go to the bathroom, but I didn't want to go alone because it's next to my room, so I took my sister and dared her to sit in my room for the duration of my pee. To my horror I heard her footsteps bolt out and I found her hyperventilating on her bed. She had seen a pale hand dart out from under my bed, which is like her worst fear. We locked the bedroom door to sleep soundly, but every time we looked over, it was unlocked. This happened five times before we gave up. The closet door also kept opening through the night. We live on a family property, with our grandparents having lived here my mother and her brother, and our mother always passed down the wisdom that when the sun starts to go down, you go inside. I've always thought it was just because we have coyotes and the occasional wolf, now I wonder. Our outside experiences include, seeing black masses move through the forest and behind trees, children and mothers crying in the woods behind us. Screams. Just screams. Good trenching screeches. We've have foxes and wildcats. We're experienced in wood etiquette, and this is just different. The woods going silent, and the cracking of one path being made through the woods, with us seeing nothing. Eyes watching us way too far off of the ground, and way too focused to leave us comfortable staring back. This is only the beginning. Please leave a comment. Is this a SW? Is it just a ghost or something? Any advice is appreciated. We just want this to stop. Thanks for anyone who read this fully. I was on holiday when I saw my first skinwalker. It was in 1991 and my parents took me to a campground in Texas that wasn't far from an area with a known coyote problem. We were only staying there for a week. But being the young kid I was, I got bored very quickly. It only took three days before I ended up wandering away from my parents and off the campsite itself. Mind you, this was before everyone had cell phones and cameras and all that in their pocket, so if someone went missing, they really went missing. I wasn't sure how long or how far I walked, but I remember ending up near a small patch of trees. By now I was getting hungry, so I called for my mother. I assumed, being the dumbass kid that I was, that she wasn't all that far from where I was. I turned around but couldn't see either of my parents anywhere. Hell, I couldn't see much of anything, save for an old dirt road and trees. I started to get scared as I realized that there wasn't anyone around, let alone my parents. I panicked and started running the way I thought I came but ended up tripping and falling over. I'm not ashamed to admit that I started to cry. I was only six at the time. But then I started to hear my mother call for me. I started looking around but couldn't see her. She called my name again and I started getting confused. I couldn't see her anywhere yet it sounded like she was right next to me. I kept looking around getting more and more upset when I heard it. A gunshot followed by what sounded like a dog screaming. Then I heard my mother again, this time calling for help. She was begging and pleading for me to come and help her. Then another gunshot and I thought I could hear her howl in pain. Then a coyote came running from the small patch of trees, followed very quickly by a tall man. He raised a rifle and shot the coyote killing it. 
He made sure it was dead before turning to me and asking if I was all right. Long story short, I fully believe that Coyote was really a skinwalker trying to lure me into the trees and that the man saved my life. He turned out to be a family friend of my uncle who lived near there and managed to get me back to my parents safely. It's been 30 years since that day and I've devoted my life to hunting down skinwalkers. They're rare enough that I've only ever encountered 17 throughout my life, 12 of which I killed personally. But there are still more out there, waiting, watching. I'm always ready for my next encounter. I think you guys here might have a healthy appreciation for this strange story I was told by some Hopi children in Nii, Arizona, inside the Navajo Reservation. Basically the short version of the story is that my grandma had been living with the Hopi for a few years and so when my family went to visit her we went to the Hopi Reservation with her. I was probably about 10 at this point so me and my little brother were told to go play with the other kids and so they played with us and showed us around. We did this for a while until sunset when some of them started saying that we needed to go inside as to avoid the guy who takes children. He probably had some specific name but I don't remember it so I apologize, but anyways, being rather skeptical I asked them what they meant. I assumed that it was some old wives tale meant to scare the children inside, but they ended up describing some guy with like a hook for a hand or something who came and took children into the night and talking about all the specific instances of other children they knew who had been taken. They had this air to them when they told the story that no other playground rumor has matched, as they all seemingly had experience with it, or had seen it, or knew people who had gone missing because of it. This reservation is pretty much in the middle of nowhere too so it especially unnerved me. It's possible they could have been having fun at my expense, but if they were, they really did a great job at not breaking character. Also if they were lying, I feel like they would have been actively trying to scare me but they seemed pretty nonchalant about it. Presumably if this thing takes children and disappears them, and it's real, and not just a trafficker or something, it could be some kind of skinwalker. Anyways, thanks for reading. Weird Experience Inside the Grand Canyon We were looking for a free place to park and sleep so we just randomly drove to a camping area that was deeply inside the Grand Canyon. Things started to get weird as we were approaching to the camping site, we passed what it looked like an abandoned town where there was this entrance with dirt road that would drive into the canyon. All the houses were boarded up and abandoned. There was only one station in the radio and it had a weird very outdated and possible racist song playing like from the 1920s. It was late and there was no moon, so we drove around 30 minutes in pitch dark down the canyon until we reached the camping site. The camping site was like an opening as we reached the bottom and there were like five wooden tents. Sparse around the area in a circular fashion. We drove around in a circle illuminating everything to notice our surroundings and then parked in the middle and made a campfire. As we were hanging out in the campfire, my wife noticed a reflection in one of the wooden tents, it seemed like a piece of metal was hanging and it was glaring back the red back lights of the car. As I noticed it I had the urge to point it with my flashlight and when I did, it appeared to be that there was another reflection under it reflecting the light of my flashlight. So I became confused and started to move my flashlight in a pattern like I'm waving and notice the reflection waving back. But the reflection was like 250 milliseconds slower so I did it many times confirming that there was some strange lag in the reflection that put me really uneasy because I couldn't understand why there would be a lag. As I'm perplexed by what's happening. We noticed now actual flashlights from where there was a reflection so we felt relieved as we noticed that someone there so we just turned around and awaited for what we assume was a park ranger. We could see a couple of flashlights bouncing at a near distance like 150 feet like people were walking toward us. But, after a minute or so, 
We noticed that the flashlights just kept bouncing around and no one was approaching. They were just be pretending to be approaching. Also to add there was a dead silence so this made it even more strange. At that point, we immediately panicked at all the strange things that were happening so we just ran inside the car and drove away. For a week now my girlfriend has seen a humanoid slimy creature on all four with their jaw dislocated digging in her neighbor's trash can and backyard. She saw it tonight again while it's pouring outside but she saw it while it ran and didn't get the chance to record it and the neighbors shut their blinds at that moment so she knew they saw it too and she made sure everything was locked. We aren't sure if maybe it's a deformed animal or skinwalker she's in Iowa Des Moines. The first time she saw it she made eye contact and she was terrified and hid in her room and said it wouldn't stop knocking at her windows and then heard what sounded like a can scrapping the pavement as it left. English isn't my first language so sorry for grammar and spelling if I did spell anything wrong. I know my grandma is like A. I am just so bad at writing but I tried. I never believed in skinwalkers before the night. That horrible night. West Virginia has been home to my family for generations, ever since the first settlers came here in the 1700s. In fact, I'm the first of my family to live outside of Virginia since coming here and my son is the first born outside the state. In all that time, stories of skinwalkers were of course passed down from the natives and through my family. My great, great grandmother was a native, but I never believed them. I've spent the last three months staying at a cabin my dad used to own out in the woods. Solar panels at Al. Quiet, peaceful and far away from all the BS going on in the world. My wife doesn't really enjoy it all that much since she's got a bit too much of the city in her. And our son, at six months, is too young to care. The cabin is rather nice, as far as most cabins go. Two bedrooms, a kitchen and even a small bath slash shower combo. The front of the cabin had a small porch with a bench and light. Simple. Other than the driveway and road leading up to the cabin, there is a four meter clearing surrounding it which itself is surrounded by thick forest. The only other buildings are the tool shed and the waste tank. The nearest town was maybe 40 miles away. Not really that isolated, but isolated enough that it didn't really matter. The night in question happened just last week. We'd just come back after spending the day visiting my mother and were more than ready to just call it a day. Jack, my son, was already asleep which made it easier for us to settle down and my wife was practically falling asleep herself. For context we didn't get back to the cabin until well past 10.30, and we'd been up since 5 that morning. So while she put Jack to bed, I went out onto the porch for a quick smoke. The wife doesn't really like me smoking, so I usually take a quick one last thing on the porch where she doesn't have to smell the smoke. Normally I just sit there for a good 20, 30 minutes not really caring all that much about what's going on. Sometimes I'll try to see if I can hear coyotes or wolves though this night it was oddly quiet. Admittedly, I wasn't really trying but coyotes especially were common enough that it was rare not to hear a pack of them this far out into the forest. I quickly finished and was about to go inside when I heard a coyote call coming from the forest. The weird thing is, it sounded like the coyote was right in front of the cabin. Then I realized that it didn't really sound like a coyote at all. It sounded like someone making a coyote call. And it was coming from just within the forest, where I couldn't see anything. No one was supposed to be out here but me and my family. But there was someone in the forest right now making coyote noises. What if they were some crazy person watching me and my family? I rushed inside to find my wife in a state of panic and holding Jack. What's going on? I asked her. The shocked and scared look on her face said it all. In there, she said, pointing towards the main bedroom. 
I rushed in but didn't see anything. Then I saw the window. It was open. And there was blood all over it. I rushed back to my wife and what she told me horrified me. Some sort of weird monster opened the window from the outside and started climbing in. She couldn't get a good look at it before grabbing Jack and getting out of there, but she described it as looking like a dog but bigger and a little like a person. It sounded like she was describing a werewolf. Either way, we couldn't stay there. We spent the next few days staying with my mother before I returned to the cabin. I went back with my brother and two of my uncles. They spent the journey there mocking me on running, knowing full well I kept a gun in the cabin at all times. It stopped when we got there. The cabin was destroyed. It had caught fire and had burned down. Surrounding what had been my cabin were coyote tracks. I don't know if it really was a skinwalker, but from what me and my wife witnessed I have no reason to doubt it. I lived in Farmington, New Mexico the last couple of years. Where I worked wasn't even a 10 minute walk from my apartment so I walked to work every day. After about a year of living there I started seeing a deer during my walk. It would stand in the field across the street and just watch me walk. It was a pretty busy street and it would just stand there and watch me very directly. I would see it once to three times a month. I don't know what normal behavior is for deer in New Mexico so I didn't know what to think. Three weeks ago I moved to California. I was born and raised and lived here for 18 years before moving away for the last 7 years. In those 18 years I've seen one coyote even though there's quite a good population in the area I'm in. Just last weekend I was driving home after running some errands and there was one coyote standing in an empty lot on my street and it just watched me drive by. The speed limit is only 25 miles per hour on my street and I usually go slower when I'm not in a rush so I just watched him watch me drive by. A few nights, both before and after seeing that, the coyotes have been louder and closer to the house than ever before. They'll be screeching so loud it sounds like they're right in the front yard. Even my parents, who have been in this same house for the last 18 years said they've never heard them so loud or close. Could it be a skinwalker following me? Am I just freaking myself out? Or are these animal behaviors normal? This happened a few years ago, back when I was still in high school. I had this friend. He was a bit weird, a bit strange. Always talked about odd things like Bigfoot and Wendigos. Most everyone else would avoid him but he would often tell these spooky stories of people who went into the forest and saw things. Sometimes these people would go back into the forest and never come back out again. These stories always caught my interest as I got really deep into horror at the time so we both hung out a lot outside of school. We both lived on the same street as well, not far from each other, so we'd hang around during the holidays as well. So it was no surprise that that we spent all of Easter break together. The first few days we stayed in town, mostly staying in and around the local arcade since there wasn't much else to do small town and all that. But there was a small forest just south of the town no one really went to other than campers and hikers. It wasn't spooky or known for having a bad rep or anything, just most people didn't really care to go there. So after a few days me and my friend were bored and didn't want to spend all day at the arcade again, so he suggested we go to the forest. You know, explore it while telling horror stories to each other. It seemed like a fun idea at the time and I suppose it would be. After hopping on a bus that had a stop not far from there, we arrived at the forest not really expecting anything to happen. We'd scare each other using our stories before heading back into town before it got dark. And that's what happened for the first few hours. Like I said, we weren't expecting anything to happen, but we weren't expecting to find anything either. 
So imagine our surprise when we stumbled across this old beaten up house far from the nearest road. Windows all smashed in, no door and with stuff growing all over it. It was so out of place that at first we couldn't believe what we were seeing. Why was there a house all the way out here? It didn't make sense. Without thinking, my friend turned to me and told me he was going inside before walking towards the building. I didn't say anything, instead just followed him in. That was a mistake. There wasn't much inside, just dusty furniture, loads of cobwebs and the sort of stuff you'd expect to see in an abandoned house. Wasn't as scary as I thought it'd be. We were about to turn around and leave when we heard it. A howl from outside. I had never heard a sound like that in my life before or since. We were upstairs when we heard it, and a god thing too because it sounded like it was coming from the door we used to get inside. Another howl confirmed the fact that it wasn't just in our heads. My friend turned to me and said it was a coyote. I'd never seen a coyote before and was told that they weren't all that common in the area the town was due to overhunting. I called BS right before whatever it was howled for a third time. Then we heard it speak. Come down here, a voice called out. It wasn't a normal voice. It sounded like a smoker's voice, but with this odd high pitch, low pitch mix that made it sound unnatural, like something pretending to speak with a human voice. I know you're here, it said, why don't you come down here? We both just stood there, frozen in place. It spoke again, but I couldn't understand what it was saying. Then we heard a gunshot and someone shout get away from there. There was some sort of struggle before an elderly Native American came and found us. He never told us what was waiting for us downstairs, just told us it was evil and to never come back to the house. I still get nightmares of that day. Hey everyone, before I start typing, just know that before last night, I have had zero encounters with paranormal slash cryptids or anything of the sort. They interested me as stories and such, but I never put much stock into them. Two nights ago me and my friend Pat were out hunting in my timber in Illinois. It's a large area with miles of woods and fields surrounding. There isn't a town for about 10 to 15 minutes depending which direction you go. So anyways we were out last night at sunset and a bit beyond that when we started to get a weird feeling. We set our bait in the fields and things were fine. No bites or yotes though. We decided to move our bait closer to the timber and post up on top of some hay bales that sit along the timber line. We had our backs to the woods. We started hearing noises but chalked it up to raccoons, possums act. We also saw some deer right before we set up. We started to hear this weird whistling sound coming from off in the distance. It started as soon as we got near the area with the woods. At first it sounded like a bird, but it sounded weirdly metallic slash broken sounding and extremely consistent. We shrugged it off as a bird for a while and went back to our hunt. We both had our 15s and 9mm handguns. The whistling continued and it unnerved us more and more as it happened. It started happening across the field at another tree line. We started to get a feeling that we were being watched. We later theorized that the whistling might have been some sort of communication slash tracking method. We started to get more and more spooked till we left to go pick up some friends. We were gonna do a bonfire there, so we head back to the car which is parked along another section of the woods, and all of a sudden everything goes silent. The wind stops, the birds stop, the bugs stop. Silence. Then all of a sudden we hear the whistling again and it's coming from every section of the woods, and there's rustling coming from everywhere. We jump in the car fast and haul us out of there. We go and pick up our friends, who don't really believe us, Abby and Cody believe in cryptids and the paranormal, but think we might be imagining things, while Ariel thinks we're just being paranoid, so anyways we pick them up and head back to the area. We call it the Moody Farm BTW and they want to check things out. So we load up the rifles, distribute guns act, and head out. 
Abby and Ariel stayed back at the car while Pat, Cody, and I went out and looked around. The whistling started as soon as we got out there and Cody started to realize that maybe we weren't lying slash playing a prank. This is where things start to really start pinging my danger signals like crazy, we push farther along the trail and start looking for where our bait is located. Before we left the last time we said out loud that we'd check it when we got back, we reach the bait and we still hear the whistles. I get this random thought that maybe the bait is now being used for us instead of coyotes. Cody saw the eyes this time too and was starting to freak a bit. We pushed farther in and we hear this strange noise. I call for a halt and pat and I set up as good as a perimeter as we can, instructing Cody to watch the flank. I call out to the woods instructing whoever is out there to come out, that they're on private property and that I am armed and will shoot if I feel threatened. Suddenly Pat yells out WTF is that thing. I snap over to look and I see this blur of movement from behind the hay bales. It was covered in shadows and I couldn't see it super clearly, but to me it seemed like if something that was 8 or 9 feet tall was trying to hunch over to around 6 and it's moving pretty fast. I yell out for everyone to move and I pop 3 shots off at it with my rifle. At first we're moving swiftly but at high ready, We have Pat out front with Cody in the middle. Pat's watching the woods while Cody is trying to cover the bean field. I'm watching flank. We're trying to get back to the group. I catch another blur and pop of another three, trying to lay down some suppressing fire to whatever TF is now following us. The whistles start to ring out loud now and I hear a large cracking noise from the woods and I give the order to run. We start running in the same marching order, Pat, Cody, me. Every 25 feet or so it'd turn and fire off a few rounds into the woods, in hopes of scaring off slash covering our asses against whatever it is. We get back to the car and Ariel instantly thinks we're messing with them. We load up and haul us out of there. It might be worth mentioning we saw a group of deer in the entrance to the field both times before all this started. We drove up to the barnyard where we were gonna have our fire and tried to calm down a bit, but it doesn't end there. We believe we were chased all the way up to the barnyard. I didn't really see any of what was happening next cause I was reloading mags slash messing with other stuff. But Pat and Cody call out that they saw something look around the corner of one of the barn-like buildings and then slink back away. They also claim to have seen some sort of face looking at us through a hole in a wall. I make the call to leave and we start to head out, except for some reason Abby can't see out her rear mirror and has to have Pat direct her out, so he's out there extremely exposed trying to guide her car out. I pull up close to them and then jump out trying to help cover slash get some extra eyes out there. We eventually make it out and are driving off back to my house which is only about 3-5 to minutes away. Flash forward to the next day around noon one pmish and I get the great idea to go out there alone and check the bait piles. I never made it to the bait, the whistling started pretty quickly and then I heard sounds like something running through the woods and crashing through stuff, I've never ran so fast in my life I swear. I've had this strange sense of dread since then, thankfully it's gone now cause it's making me extremely paranoid. I don't know what you guys think about this. But there's my story. For the last 10 years me and my wife have owned and worked on a cattle farm. It's a decent sized herd we use for the meat and though it's been tough the last few years we're making enough to get by comfortably. A few months ago we welcomed our baby girl, hopefully the first of many kids and grandkids, So my wife was stuck raising her while I managed the farm alone. I didn't mind since cattle are normally pretty easy to handle. This particular day was different. The herd was skittish and on alert the entire day, which cattle don't normally do unless they smell something they don't like. I assumed there were coyotes somewhere nearby, but for some reason I couldn't hear them. Coyotes are usually pretty loud, so this was really unnerving. 
I would make regular patrols around my land to make sure nothing was where it shouldn't be, usually finding nothing. It was getting pretty late by the time I decided to take one last patrol around the farm. It was already pretty dark, so I wasn't expecting to see much. I was at the opposite side of the farm away from the house when I thought I heard a voice come from in front of me. I was a little confused. We live in the middle of nowhere miles from the nearest town and two miles from the nearest homestead. It couldn't have been my wife since she was back in the house, leaving me wondering who it was in front of me. I started approaching carefully, only to begin recognizing the voice. It was my wife. I began wondering why she was all the way out here rather than with our daughter, until I got closer to the figure standing in front of me. Whoever, or whatever they were, it wasn't my wife. Their back was turned, but I could clearly see they were wearing some sort of fur coat. I stopped before I could get too close and stuttered hello. The figure didn't answer me, didn't even seem to hear me. Hello, I asked again louder this time. I wish I hadn't. The figure turned and I clearly saw what it looked like. It looked like a horrifying, misshapen version of my wife, as if she'd been crudely made out of clay. Whatever it was, it didn't speak. Instead it smiled and started walking towards me. But not like a normal person would, like it wasn't used to walking on two legs. It walked slowly as I stood there frozen in fear. One step, then another, then another. I tried to scream, to move. Then it looked me in the eyes and said, Baby? Why don't you come over here and help me? It sounded exactly like my wife. But I suddenly found myself able to move. It wanted me to approach it. But I ran. It took me minutes to make it back to the house. But just as I was about to enter I heard a coyote call out in the distance. I hadn't heard coyotes all day and now I was hearing them. I had to make the choice to either protect my herd or my family and I chose the latter. I love my cows, I do. But my family comes first. I found my wife in the living room, already having put our daughter to bed. I quickly forced her upstairs and barricaded all three of us in the bedroom. I didn't have time to explain when we heard knocking at the front door and then we heard the same voice call out to me. Baby, I'm cold. Please let me in. It still sounded exactly like my wife who was now standing right next to me. She asked me what was happening but I had no answers for her. The thing whatever it was kept banging on the doors and windows, occasionally trying to convince me to let it in. Sometimes it would be replaced by coyote calls, but usually the only thing we could hear was that thing using the voice of my wife. The very next morning it had gone, and three of my cows had been killed. Although skinwalkers are generally believed to prey only on Native Americans, there are recent reports from Anglos claiming they had encountered skinwalker while driving on or near tribal lands. One New Mexico Highway Patrol officer told us that while patrolling a stretch of highway south of Gallup, New Mexico, he had had two separate encounters with a ghastly creature that seemingly attached itself to the door of his vehicle. During the first encounter, the veteran law enforcement officer said the unearthly being appeared to be wearing a ghostly mask as it kept pace with his patrol car. To his horror, he realized that the ghoulish specter wasn't attached to his door after all. Instead, he said, it was running alongside his vehicle as he cruised down the highway at a high rate of speed. The officer still patrols the same stretch of highway and that he says is petrified every time he enters the area. I was once surrounded by a family of skinwalkers. This happened earlier this year when I was driving back home from a three-day work trip and was driving through North Carolina when my truck ran out of fuel. It was a stupid-ass mistake that I should have kept an eye on. To make things worse, 
The car stopped in an area covered in forest miles away from the nearest gas station. After making a few calls, all I could do was wait. It was already dark when I thought I spotted someone a good distance in front of me. It looked like a person standing in the middle of the road. I couldn't see if they were looking at me or not. But they were just standing there not moving. I decided to stay in my truck as I wasn't sure about what to do. This turned out to be a good idea as I very quickly spotted something moving in the forest to the right of my truck. Again, I couldn't clearly see what it was, but it did look as if there was a person trying to keep low to the ground. And again on my left. Before I could see what either of the things or people or whatever they were, a large coyote jumped onto the front of my car. It started howling and growling at me, trying to break through the front window. Then something hit the driver's side window. I turned to look, and saw what could only be described as a monster. It was a person. But they had the legs and arms of a coyote and their face was all messed up, like if a child tried to make a human face out of clay. Whatever it was smiled, showing me the sharp teeth that filled its mouth. I didn't dare look at the passenger side window as I heard something hit it. The monster was about to open my door when a light came from behind. The rescue truck had arrived to pick me up. The light must have scared the things surrounding me because they all ran off back into the forest. I looked in front of me and whoever was standing out in the middle of the road had gone. The driver who'd come to get me had told me that this occasionally happens and that it's probably best not to talk about it to anyone. He told me that none of the locals use that road after dark. Now I know why. So I'm Cherokee, I live in northeastern Oklahoma, and I think my roommates and I have encountered a skinwalker. We live in a really small neighborhood and at night, my roommate takes her small dog out into the front yard to let her go to the bathroom. It was around 4 a.m. when my roommate went outside with her dog like usual and she saw something walking at the end of our driveway, which is maybe 50 to 60 feet long. Her description of what she saw was something on four legs that didn't look like it had a head but she was without her glasses and in the dark. She and her dog hid by our other roomie's car until it walked further up the road and then she grabbed her dog and booked it inside. I thought that was weird jokingly said it could have been a skinwalker, then we just sort of teetered off from there. Fast forward to about two nights ago, my roommate is at work so I take her dog outside and am standing in our front yard, it's dark out and suddenly, her dog, which is a very small dorky, takes a few steps and barks and then I hear my dad talking from a few feet away. My dad lives about an hour away and I rarely see my dad. So there's no way it's was really him. I told my roommate's dog to hush and I look around but none of my neighbors are outside. It's just me and my roommate's dog. She keeps barking and I felt this sense of dread so I quickly usher her inside and I closed our curtains. I'm not sure if it is a skinwalker but it mimicked my dad and it was clear as day. I don't know much about any Cherokee legends, as I grew up away from my culture but my first thought was skinwalker. Let me know what y'all think. I'm not sure if this belongs in this sub, or where I should repost it, just looking for some guidance, not sure what is going on. I live in the suburbs in Arizona, right by a mountain preserve. There are plenty of washes around, we get coyotes, bobcats, raccoons, the usual. We have plenty of chickens and five dogs. One wolf dog, one big male Akita, three Anatolian shepherds, two are male puppies though. The dogs are inside dogs, but we let them into the yard and they have free roam. We have a six foot wall around a large yard. We have neighbors on all three sides of the wall. One of the houses to the side is vacant, and the one directly behind us the owner hasn't been home for about a month. On both sides of his house is a wash. About a week ago at dusk, 
My sister had called for all the dogs to come inside. She saw one of the pups walking away from her and into some bushes out of sight and called to it. I asked her what she was calling to, and she said the pup. I said no, Hess right here. Which he was. All the dogs were accounted for. We just brushed it off as strange but didn't think much of it. Last night, around 12, 30 at night, my father and I are awake in the family room. We hear a large bang from outside, which sounds like a trash can lid closing. So we send out the Akita, and we grab lights and head outside. We check the trash cans, nothing is disturbed as far as we can tell. I notice my sister has come to the door because she heard the bang too. I head back in to talk to her, when my dad pops his head in and asks if we let out the puppies. We say no and he gets mad and responds that he's right there outside. The Akita we let outside is standing next to my father. Our four other dogs are laying right inside. We watch as what is not our pup, but looks like his backside, walk behind our greenhouse and out of sight. The same dog that my sister had seen the other day. Same size. Same color. Same curly tail. Both times, we only saw its backside. There's no chance this breed is running wild in Arizona. That pup has also recently gotten a scar across his muzzle, but we thought it was from the other dogs picking on him more than usual lately. He is also the only dog that barks at his reflection at night in the windows. Our dogs usually run around the yard day or night playing. In the past few days they have been hanging around the door while they are outside, or around us when we go outside. They have been uncomfortable recently, which is weird for them. The five together in the yard fear nothing. The smallest are literally the two male puppies weighing in at 70 pounds each. What we saw looked exactly like him. ATL East what we saw which was his backside. We didn't follow because of everything I read on these subs say not to. And not knowing what it was I wasn't about to take that chance without some guidance. There is no chance this is a wild dog hopping our six-foot fence. There are no wild Anatolian shepherds in the area. It's more of a rare breed. Any thoughts on what it could be or what it wants? Also side note, we usually don't hear other dogs barking at night. We've heard more than ever recently, but only on days that we have not seen the dog. Updates. From dusk to dawn one of us goes out and walks with the dogs. We also bought a new stronger flashlight that lights up the area pretty nicely. We have cut slash cleaned up a lot of the brush so there's less hiding spots. However when we walk the dogs at night, they do their business and head back to the door even before we do. Have never known them to not want to be outside. Have not seen anything since the two sightings although it's only been a few days. We have heard on two different nights, a large pack of coyotes in the neighborhood, and even heard they got two neighbor's dogs. And when I say here, I mean it's 1 a.m. and we hear the howling and fighting and the losing side. The coyotes are not the ones making the dogs uncomfortable. We had one jump the wall in the past and all of our dogs went after it. It couldn't get back over fast enough. So still concerned because they aren't comfortable again yet and not sure why. We'll update again if we see something else. So I'm gonna sum up my experience real quick. Brother wanted to show me some bridge that he said had spooky stuff happen on. Didn't believe him, went, nothing happened for a while then stuff started. First I heard like some woman scream from far off, which they didn't apparently, later I heard a quick and short whistle from under the bridge somewhere. And later we decided it was time to leave as I got in the car I looked out on the right and in the shrubs somewhere I saw two glowing red eyes. Stared at each other for a second then whatever it was ran away into the trees. Told my brother a second later and he said they always leave whenever they see the red eyes like as if it was some common occurrence, so was this a skinwalker? 
From what I've heard it sounds like it, but I'm just trying to figure out what the hell I just heard and saw. Also for location I'm in a very undeveloped country part of Texas. Lots of trees and shrubs etc where we were. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.